So recently I've been talking about the multiverse. I've talked about this a couple times, even did one or one video, maybe two videos on it. Um, the multiverse is this idea that our universe is not the only universe that exists, but a multitude of universes exist. Um, maybe in definitely many, many, uh, maybe even an infinite amount, depending on who you're talking to and what's the theory. Um, and recently, somebody, as, as I'm discussing this, somebody kind of asked, well, what's the evidence for the multiverse? And the reason they were saying it was almost as though they were saying, hey, uh, there's really no evidence for the multiverse, okay? It's a, people came up with this idea. It's just a theory. But really, I mean, what, what evidence is there for a multiverse? And it got me thinking because in some ways, I can kind of see where they're coming from. They're saying, well... I want some type of positive evidence that would point to only the conclusion that there'd be a multiverse. Something that was like really obvious, like a big, the equivalent of a big giant arrow pointing to the conclusion there is a multiverse. And I don't, I think they've, barring that, somebody's gonna say, oh, that's just too far, too out there of a theory. But I, I think that sometimes this is a, you know, if you're not into the multiverse, that's not interesting a uh, topic that interests you great we're not i'm not really want to focusing on uh, the multiverse today but more what i want to think about is our perception of what evidence is so when we look at like when somebody says there may be a multiverse there are some things that they're going to point to that they could point to that would suggest a multiverse could exist some of the things in science could be like the extremely small chance that life would exist uh, there's like a, I mean, actually, this is one of the biggest Christian arguments for the existence of God. They'll talk about the fine tuning of the universe. The universe appears to be created just so to allow for human life. And if anything was just slightly different, life would not exist at all, let alone life like ours that was capable of having deep intellectual thoughts and conversations. It seems like it's just so. And Christians will say, well, that evidence points to the idea that there is a creator. Well, somebody who might believe in the multiverse could look at the same uh, phenomenon, the fine-tuning of the universe, and say, well, this isn't evidence of a creator. This could be evidence of a multiverse where there's a, m a million universes and they're all, they're all different, but just one just happens through chance because there's so many. One just happens through chance to be just right for human life. And that just happens to be the one we're living in. That would be, we don't have to agree with the conclusion, oh, there, therefore there is a multiverse, but that alone, the, the fine tuning, could be considered evidence for a multiverse. Really, when we, I think we're, we are so quick, I see this on both sides of every argument, there's so many people will just say, there's no evidence for that. They, they want you to believe that, there's no evidence for that. And the, uh, the other side will say the same thing. But I think we're, we're very quick to kind of simplify arguments. The, the chances that there's no evidence for an alternative view is very low. Now, there's some things which just cannot be true. Like, logically, they are impossible. And if, if that's the case, then sure, yes, we can know. Like, there's no evidence that 1 plus 1 equals 3, right? 1 plus 1 equals 2. There is no evidence. The one plus one equals three. But there are many things that are possible, even if they're highly unlikely. And there could be evidence for those things. Actually, I would argue that the fact that something is possibly true is in itself a piece of evidence. Now, I wouldn't say it's a very compelling piece of evidence. Lots of things are possibly true that are not true. But things that are highly unlikely to be true might still be true. Actually, things that there's, that there's no evidence for could be true if they're possible. So I would say actually the fact that something is a possible answer is itself evidence. So there's really nothing, there's very few things I would say there's no evidence for. Now a lot of times, this is just how we talk. We'll say, we'll, we, we wanna make big generalizations. The people who we disagree with, there, there's no evidence for that. There's great evidence for our stuff. There's no evidence for any other view. But really I think if we're gonna be intellectually honest, I don't think we could say there's no evidence. All we're really saying is what's the most reasonable conclusion? Now, I get it. A lot of people don't believe that there's a multiverse. I don't really, I don't really strongly believe that there is one, but I'm kind of open to it. I don't, I don't know if it really makes 
it doesn't really make a huge difference to me. And I kind of, for me personally, I kind of think the evidence is not really that compelling for it. But if there is one, that's, that's great. But if somebody believes strongly that there is a multiverse, I, I can't really hand wave away their belief by saying there's no evidence for that. There is some evidence. It's possible that a multiverse exists. There's a couple things, like I would say the fine tuning of the universe. The multiverse might help explain how the universe began. If there's a multiverse, maybe it comes from like some type of other system that's outside the universe that creates universes. So maybe that helps explain the Big Bang. So there, there's some evidence, but it's you can see that they're, they're taking small pieces of data and they're inferring something, the multiverse. Honestly, Christians are doing the same thing. We're taking small pieces of data like the beginning of the universe, the fine tuning of the universe, and we're inferring something also, the existence of God. Now, I would not allow, or I guess I should say, I, I wouldn't um, really, I wouldn't put a lot of stock in if I was talking to someone who did not believe there was a God, an atheist, and they said, there's no evidence for God. I wouldn't put a lot of stock in that because I'd say, no, 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 there, there's evidence for God. To say there's no evidence is a gross overgeneralization, right? You might not believe that the evidence that I have is sufficient for you to believe that there's a God, but there is evidence. But in on the flip side, I've got to be fair and not a lot and not say there's no evidence for atheism. There's evidence. I just don't think it's compelling. We're all looking for the most reasonable conclusion. So the we don't have to. Uh, we don't require the other side to have no evidence. And if they have evidence, we don't have to. Uh, accept their beliefs. It's not about who has evidence and who doesn't have evidence. It's about whose explanation of the evidence is the most reasonable. That's the truth. That's the thing that we should accept, that we should believe.